What is Narcissistic Personality Disorder? Welcome everybody to Signposts for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter and we are joined today with gorgeous Kristen Coggan. Hello my darling. Hi! <laughs> are we rusty? It's been so long, I'm so excited. <laughs> Everyone, I don't know when you're actually going to hear this because we have a backlog of sessions and we, uh, sessions, how do you like that? Yeah. Backlog of podcasts and we release them every week and we release ours every third week so who knows when this will be released but between you and I we've had a little... A little rest, haven't we? Yes, we've had a little break. We have. Over the summer months. We have. And we're back. Yes. <laughs> Fresh, ready to go. And we had to stop laughter in t- yeah, to, to, to start with um, a few serious looks from John. Mm. So it's not looking good for a serious topic, is it? No, it is. It's, it's good. We're good to go. <laughs> You're I, the problem, not me. <laughs> I'll take that. That's absolutely fine. All right, my darling. So, as always, you have no idea what we're talking about. No, not until you said it just then. Narcissistic personality disorder. You know what? It occurred to me that this comes up all the time for me in session. I spend a lot of time talking, educating people, educating people who are coming in and describing features of this in their world. And um, there's a lot of learning curves happening. And I thought, well, hey, what a great place to talk about it. In a podcast. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So do you personally know much about narcissistic PD, personality disorder? Put um, you on a hot seat right there. Had a little bit of experience with it over the years. But like seriously, what age were you when you came across it? Oh, in hindsight, um, probably in my early 20s. Right. And we're talking um, people distant from you, close to you, and you do not need to disclose. Uh, they were new to me. New to you. Supposedly close. Mm. Now extremely distant. There you go. See you later. Well, that's one of the good coping mechanisms, isn't, isn't it? it? <laughs> Boundaries and see you later. Isn't it? Oh, gosh. So um, did you go and read about narcissistic personality disorder or did you... Mm. How did you how did you figure this out? Because um, this is the thing: most people they they come across these people, they don't know what to make of it. They're absolutely ambushed, mm. and it is a, it is a learning curve. That's yep. what it's about. And yep. when you have the learning curve, then you are forewarned, and you hopefully are somewhat skilled. Yes. So I had no idea. I didn't know what it was. It was a term that I'd heard. Oh, like I didn't really. She's a narcissist. He's yeah. a narcissist. That annoys me. Didn't a lot. really understand it. Mm. Um, and then was in a situation that I was desperately trying to understand because it was so hard. And I guess just doing some research and reading and um, thought, wow, that's. And I remember I actually read an article one day and it just light bulbs went off. It just ticked so many boxes. Mm. Like, yeah, look at that. That is that is a very good way of putting it. People do describe light bulb waking yeah. up, joining the dots. It's not me. This is actually yeah. It was a actually thing. I was about to say that was it was such a relief to know that it wasn't me. I hadn't got it all wrong, and I wasn't stupid or going mad. Mm. Mm. And also, I think when you're in the throes of dealing with someone with narcissistic personality disorder, which we're about to explain, um, you can feel like you're the only person on the planet. It, planet experiencing this you can feel very alone you oh it's unbelievable you can't tell people about it because it's so unbelievable it's like a movie mm-hmm. everything's it's unbelievable well let's come back to the movie point later on yep. actually yeah it, it, it is it's very isolating isn't mm. it and usually narcissistic personality disorder people as we're about to describe um you know to the outside world they are in charm mode Mm -hmm. and they only really show it behind closed doors. And when you're behind closed doors with somebody, you are aligned with them and you have a shared front. So therefore you feel kind of obliged to kind of cover for them to a degree. Um, You know, you feel a bit um, self-conscious of whatever it is. Mm. So you actually become part of their superficial deception and you actually are minimising, making excuses for them and the person who's actually causing you harm, you become kind of a weird ally for them. 
Mm-hmm. So you, in the process, you lose your voice, mm. and um, you know that's that's no 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 um, uh, accident. Mm-hmm. That's actually very clever. Yeah, so. it's there's so much. I guess when I stood back and I could understand the dynamics of what it was, mm. there was so much thought and so much manipulation. Mm. Synonymous with narcissistic PD. So much. Um, I say PD, everyone, personality disorder, yep. PD. Um, so much organisation on their behalf, mm. um, behind the scenes. Yeah. But, yes. And then the process of actually stepping away from them and breaking away from them, I would say, is one of the most courageous things you could do mm. because you're in a vulnerable position at mm. a time when you need to be strong at a time when you've actually isolated yourself from your support people because of this. Mm. Yeah. Do you remember that? If you were if you're in your 20s, that would have been quite significant. Yeah, so by the time that happened, it was probably... Like I said, it was in my early 20s. It was probably my late 20s um, and then into my 30s when, worked at, when, when I worked out what was happening. Um, yeah, and so what was your question again? There's lots of things coming back at me. <laughs> <laughs> and you had no idea we were going to get so heavy, did you? No. You never no. know with me if I'm going to go really light and mm. stupid or really heavy. No, that's right. That's right. And I'm just wondering, I'm also, I um, want to talk about this because it's yeah. a really important thing, but I'm very conscious of who may be listening to it as well. That's absolutely fine. And we need to be very so, careful about that. Yeah, so I'm being um, very careful. So stepping away from it wasn't just me that had to step away. There was mm. other people close to me that... We had to be united to step away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, and people had to know, be fully aware of a situation. Like, it's very hard. It's a hard, it's a hard way to navigate. Mm. It's Mm. really difficult. Yeah. What is narcissistic personality disorder? Let's get into that. Okay. Okay. So we have got in, wow, where do we, where do we, where do we start Let's just give a really, really, really brief overview. Mm-hmm. In the world of psychology and psychiatry, we have got the DSM 4, 5, soon to be 6, um, which is the diagnostic manual, which is equivalent to the Bible mm-hmm. in our world. You know, psychology, psychiatry, child people. Yeah, anyway. Um, and um, right, in the DSM 4, version 4, um, we had different axes. Axis 1 was when we would talk about all sorts of psychological issues, disorders that everyone knows about, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, eating disorders, you name it. Axis 2 was uh, personality disorders. And then we went through and had Axis 3, 4 and 5. Not relevant. Now we have DSM-5. And the thing about the DSM is that they keep kind of Psychology and psychiatry is a spectacularly difficult field to try to pin down and we keep giving it a good shot. And so the current DSM-5 doesn't have access to... Can I just interrupt? Jump in. For all us lay people Am I annoying there? you with detail? What's DSM stand for? Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Okay. Was that helpful? It's a big book. <laughs> it's a big fat book. <laughs> purple. It's purple. Okay. That makes you feel good, gives you a visual. Yep. Anyway, bottom line, bottom line is now we've got... Um, now we've got personality disorders up there with normal disorders. And, you know, it basically is we, we have all these different types of personalities where we have systematic problems in functioning. So, you know, we have problems with regard to the framework, the value system, the patterns of behaviour, the sense of the identity, um, sense of identity. It, 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 it's people who are very dysfunctional in their personality. And there's quite a few others which we won't go into. So narcissistic personality disorder is one of them and probably the most known because I would argue it's the most destructive. Um, And so people who have narcissistic personality disorder, their fundamental value system is basically um, other people are kind of pawns for their benefit and uh, it's very much about power and control, manipulation and... Uh, You know, it sounds very sinister, and in the behaviour it is, but in truth it's incredibly sad, incredibly sad, because fundamentally their value system is missing what matters, which is connection with people, Mm. you know. It's love, it's compassion. They miss it. They're missing the point. And 
you know, theoretically, if you were to get a big fat syringe of confidence and you gave it to someone with narcissistic PD, they would change, mm-hmm. you know. So it's not just they're, – they're not just psychopaths out there, although there's a massive correlation between narcissistic personality disorder and psychopathy if you were to chat with a fellow with the last name of Hare. But um, that's another conversation. But, um, you know, fundamentally they're, they're – if you if you were to think of someone with narcissistic personality disorder and you thought of them as an age, I'd probably put them at between four and six years old. Mm-hmm. You know, because they're all about themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if they don't, they all the toys in the sandpit are theirs. If they don't get what they want, they will throw a tantrum. Their framework has been um, one of entitlement. Um, except they have evolved to become very clever in their verbal IQ with regard to manipulation. And so they will work to get other people to lose their voice. They will erode someone's um, sense of their power, their their opinions. They will, if someone comes to the table with an issue, they will take it, flip it, deflect it. Somehow it becomes another topic and the other person is to blame. Or crazy. Yeah, well, you know, you clearly have got mental health problems, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Um, actually a classic pattern of someone with narcissistic PD is whatever they, they have a level of insight, like a very minimal, but, uh, where if they're doing something, they will blame the other person for that thing. So if someone with narcissistic PD is, um, cheating on their partner, they will accuse their partner of cheating. If someone with narcissistic PD is sort of siphoning money away, they will accuse their partner of that. So that's a really classic one as well. So when you don't have a personal disorder... We grow up with a intention of being constructive in our communication, of being constructive in our relationships. Mm-hmm. Whereas when someone has narcissistic PD, it's understood that they are all about power and control and winning. So it's actually about being destructive. And that's why you can't actually come to the table and talk through something because their goal is not to understand your perspective and to get a um, you know, healthy outcome. It is to win. And it is to reduce your sense of self to that of a P so that therefore they have power over you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it really is a, um, a, a very dire situation. And, um, and I argue that the population is divided into three groups. There's those who are just green and Bambi and they have no idea that people like this are in the world. Mm-hmm. Then there's those who are currently in the turmoil, in trauma. And then there's those that have lived it and they can see it and they get it and they've figured it out. They've either stepped away from these people or they've found out how to have boundaries to be able to be okay to a degree. Mm. You can't be a healthy, constructive relationship, but you can Mm self-care. And, um, you know, I personally am very proud to be in the third category. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, I was the Bambi. You were the Bambi. <laughs> Everyone was the Bambi at some point. Um, yeah, exactly. And I've 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 learned from mm. my experience, and I've and I believe that I've helped somebody else that I'm very close to that had a similar experience. And mm. because I could understand how how that person was feeling and believe them, mm. um, I think I helped them through that as well, just to have someone else that got it. Yeah, definitely, definitely that makes sense yeah oh, well that's the thing i mean because it's you've got the perspective to support someone else at yeah. that point yeah absolutely because it's phenomenal yeah. when it's happening to you yeah uh, you know what i i've supervised a lot of psychologists and and you can learn all about narcissistic personality disorder and other personality disorders but unless you've lived it you have no idea you mm. have no idea and I've, I've, um, it's really interesting. If I was to see a psychologist, I'd want to say, have you come out the other end with recovering from some of the narcissistic PD? Do you get it? Do you understand it? Because it's all theory unless you've lived it. Mm. And, and that's not anyone's fault, you know. No, I, don't, I no. don't wish someone to have trauma, but uh, it is true. Yeah. Can and, you treat someone? Ooh, hot topic. Okay, fascinating. By definition, someone with narcissistic personality disorder does not have insight. Mm. By definition, and I'll give you a bit of a really bizarre egg analogy in a minute. 
Yes, I said egg. Mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so by so they don't have insight. You can't have change unless you have insight. Yep. So there's the problem. Um, is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? Spectacularly, no. Mm-hmm. Go get a lotto ticket. It's incredibly unlikely. So no, it's more about finding a way of existing, being okay, healthy, healthy self care. That's really what it's about. Yeah, it's a really interesting topic and um i mentioned psychopathy before so everyone's everyone's used to the word psychopath Mm -hmm. they think of psychopath as being someone who's a you know running around with a knife yeah yeah but that's not the case at all there's high functioning psychopaths and low functioning psychopaths and um, one percent of the population meet diagnostic criteria of psychopaths my phd was on callous unemotional traits um what does that even mean i know right (laughs) okay so that's so a psychopath has got callous unemotional traits um, and so that's a lack of empathy. It's a lack of humanity. It's a lack of heart. They don't raise a pulse, um, plus impulsivity. And um, looking at that with regard to children who are early onset for psychopathic traits, that was my PhD. Yeah. That would have been fun. Well, it was actually. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, it was the development of empathy, yeah, measurement of it and everything like that. So anyway, um, so I know a bit about this, and... Uh, there's a, a lot of discussion about what is the difference or the correlates or the overlap between narcissistic personality disorder and psychopathy. And um, from a clinical perspective, I see a massive difference between them. A psychopath genuinely just does not have humanity in them. They don't have low self-esteem. They're quite fine, thank you very much. They just are cold-blooded and majority of them are high-functioning and they're politicians, they're CEOs, they're high-functioning business people. They're the ones that will sack 500 people because it gives them a bonus and they'll sleep well at night and they'll quite enjoy it. It's a chess move. Whereas a narcissistic person, they are much more hot and cold and they're they're very, very insecure. Um, They're needing power to feel good about themselves not just a chess move. So, you know, I can absolutely understand why people get confused by them, but um, the the fuel that drives them is fundamentally different. Um, I don't find people with narcissistic personality, personality disorder um, spine chilling at all. I find them really boring, mm-hmm. really, really boring. Because they do the same thing over and over and over. And all the Bambies in the world, they, you know, they're just blindsided and shocked by it. The people in the trauma are currently pummeled by it. But when you come out the other end, you actually say, oh, here we go again, here we go again. You know, they're really, really predictable. Yeah, they have a fantastic, um, I mean, they've got a higher verbal IQ than me and I'm pretty bright and I've got a pretty high verbal IQ. These, these people run rings around me because they've spent their whole lives learning how to manipulate, mm. twist, deflect, you know. So I'm very good at stepping out and calling them on it, but I won't engage. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, sorry, my brain's just literally gone in too many places just then. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me. You're all. on a bit of a tangent. You're in a bit no, of a zone. My brain just like, <laughs> let's go here, let's go here, let's go here. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Bottom line is they're different psychopaths. Yep. That's the punchline. That's really important. And they're boring. And they're predictable. Yeah. Let me tell you about the egg. I was just about to say, what about 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 the the egg? egg? Yes. I love this. I really love this. I I, I love the – I'm a very visual person, symbolic person, so it catches it for me. So if you think of someone who does not have a personality disorder, right, Mm -hmm. Uh, there's not actually a word for that. (laughs) <laughs> and you just don't have a personality disorder. Mm. Anyway, if you think of you yourself as an egg, um, and uh, through our childhood we're, we're becoming more hard-boiled, so we're cooking away nicely. We're learning who am I, who are these people around us, how do I function, how do I learn about myself, learn about them, how do I get on, right? So then over time they become more hard-boiled. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now their shell is their defence mechanism, which is a good thing. Mm-hmm. You need a level of privacy between yourself and the person at the bus stop. But you're able to pull back your shell and you're able to have insight. You can see your goo, degrees of goo. Um, and if someone else makes an insightful comment, you can tolerate it. Yeah. You go, yeah, yeah, that's not a big jump from what I already knew about myself. That's okay, mm-hmm. right? Um, whereas if someone has narcissistic personality disorder in this framework, um, instead of their their egg cooking away, their shell has been developing. Right. 
Yeah. So over time, the shell is getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker on the egg, but they're still goo on the inside. Yep. They're very insecure in themselves. As I said, I do think they're, you know, developmentally quite young. Mm-hmm. Um, but their shell is developing. And then their sense of who they are is their shell. They, okay, yep. their, their sense of themselves is the public image. Mm-hmm. The, the way they present to other people and charm other people, mm-hmm. Prince Charming, all that stuff, um, all the status kind of jumping through hoops, they actually think that that is who they are. And um, they don't have insight. There's such a long, long depth, uh, thick depth, help me, um, through to the goo. They don't have insight. And if you were to make an insightful comment to them and you expose that, you open that shell, what you receive is called narcissistic rage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> been there <laughs> acknowledging <laughs> which is basically i'm gonna just i'm gonna terrorize you i'm gonna annihilate you i'm gonna annihilate yeah. you and i'm really what i'm really doing is i'm teaching you don't do that back off back off and they intimidate you and um and then yep then we go back to the shell again and so they uh people with um, narcissistic pd are phenomenally two-faced so Public image is the shell and how they present, and they very much care about image because um, they think that's what it's about. And um, but at home they're the goo, mm-hmm. and the goo is is all of that messiness. And um, yeah, and that's also a very classic pattern is that there can be a huge rage one night, and then the next day you know they're they're feeling good. I'm good. We're all happy faces again. We're all we're all fine, and they don't actually. Uh, care that you're really hurt and you're really scared and intimidated and they're all behaving like nothing's happened and um, part of that is because they're actually in a good mood and therefore you should as well because it's all about them but secondly it's they're really saying do you really want to call hold me accountable for my behavior last night because if so we're going to go back into that ring and I'm going to misbehave again and and really um you know, distress you enormously. And so we learn, just keep the peace, and we learn to suppress our needs, our voice. So I didn't learn. (laughs) I'm proud of you. I didn't know that I was lifting the shell, and I didn't get it. (laughs) Well, most people are not in a safe space to do that, you know. Mm. Physically, Mm. actually, there's a lot of physical violence with with, um, narcissistic personality disorder. Yeah. No, I didn't have that. Aspect yeah. of it, yeah. <laughs> she didn't learn. I didn't know. There you go. <laughs> learning curve. Learning curve. <laughs> wow. And it's really interesting. Um, I, you know, at the very beginning, you said, "Oh, people say narcissist." You know, mm. I, the, you know, when pe- someone is very superficial and into image, and they say, "Oh, they're so narcissistic," that annoys me a lot because um, you know this is a very serious area, and they don't get it. Um, this is not about being image orientated purely. Um, this isn't about being shallow. This is about I need power and I need to manipulate mm. and erode you, and um, and uh, and the at su- all costs. It yeah, doesn't matter. Costs. And the superficial charm is just a, f- a, f- a component to it. It's not actually what's about. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, do you think they should uh, teach this in schools? <laughs> <laughs> no? Um, yeah. Like, I, it's like when you say that, should they teach this in schools? <laughs> should there be narcissistic <laughs> classes? I don't know. But there definitely <laughs> should be more learning opportunities about this stuff. I think the process of initiating people into this world, a lot of people, like, you know, if it's not in front of you, it's not your priority. It, a lot of people... Wouldn't believe you. No. I, I don't have the answer. I just don't have the answer. I think the majority of the people are Bambies travelling along, you know, there's a fox in sheep's clothing, clothing and um, wolf. Wolf in... Wolf. Help me. Yeah, help it's a me. wolf. wolf. <laughs> fox, <laughs> you know. <laughs> see, that's because my brain went somewhere else. You sure. know how... Did you see that in my face? Yep. My brain's... Dunk, I'm elsewhere. Oh, yep. I don't have ADHD. I don't. That would be a great excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really busy up there. But just got a lot going on. Yeah, so we've got Bambies, mm-hmm. and then we've got you know the wolves in, in sheep clothing, sheep's clothing, and um, and uh, yeah, I don't know the answer. I truly don't know the answer. Mm. I think it's just baptism of fire or not. Yeah, and I think um, I don't know. It's a process, but 
it's scary. Like it's frightening what these people can do and how they can affect, I reckon. And it's um, there's ripple effects for everything for a lot of other people around it. It is traumatising. Yep, it is. It is traumatising. I have people who have come in after this aftermath. Yep. And they are just they are just shaking, shattered. They they they've lost their voice. They um they've had serious psychological, sometimes physical, sometimes sexual, definitely financial abuse. Mm. Um and they've just got to rebuild and start again. It's a really spectacularly destructive process. Um I really love the family court for this group of people because um, the family court is um, about saying, hey, there's some rules, there's accountability, it's based on fact, it's far from perfect, it's a very crude machine. But basically it, it, if people have the resources and the, and mm. the, the capacity to get there, yeah, limitations, um, I've seen so many people with narcissistic PD. They sh- it should be called the personality disorder family court, honestly. Um who are just held accountable and no, sorry, you can't take all of the family's money and no, you Mm. can't take the children. Mm. Funny that. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very destructive. And if you pull it down to fact, that can't be argued with. They will try and avoid that at all costs Yeah, no. because that is going to be the make or break and do not want to go there. Mm. Mm. Another really interesting topic before we head off because I know we're we're chatting for a long time here, (laughs) Um, but is, is nature nurture. What are your thoughts? Drop it, slight, light topic there. Um, nature. N- do you think so? Nature. Interesting. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh, now you're making me think and now I sound like a Dilbury. Because um, <laughs> I'll swing the other way. Okay, I've never heard of the word Dilbury, but Energy. I'm using it. I love that. Everyone, Dilbury, use it. <laughs> Hashtag Dilbury. I don't know. What do you think? Nature or nurture? I don't know. I've got a because I don't want to give too much away why I think of what why I think. Hmm. What I think. So basically, are you born that way or are you made that way? Well, yeah, yeah. Is it genetics or is it uh, the environment? You're saying genetics. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing. Um, the The research is we don't know. Mm. Um, the research is it looks like a nice big fat combination of nature and nurture. Yes, but yeah, that's where I was just swinging. It's a bit of both, isn't it? It is. And you know, there's genotypes and phenotypes and... Right. So genotypes is you have a genetic code, but you need the environment to set that off. So yeah, you okay. might have the genetic code for schizophrenia as an example, but you need the environmental stresses to trigger that. Okay. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's kind of um, what I'm, I've read, it kind of says, well, you know, theoretically, and it is theoretical because we don't have a genetic coding for this, um, it's, you know, it, it makes sense because we have people who have, it's not des- definitely following genetic coding, you know, mm-hmm. if we look at twin studies and such like but um, but it is in families still. And, uh, you know, perhaps it is a case of there's this personality disposition and they need an environment for that. But it's that's not even that neat because we have uh, combinations of families that are really high-functioning and families that are really low-functioning and they come out with kids with narcissistic personality disorder. So, yeah. you know, hello, what, what, what? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's in the big, fat, we don't know category, mm-hmm. but we have an educated guess. Yep, that makes yeah. sense. Mm. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Mm. So there you go. There you go. There you go. That was heavy. <laughs> Fun though still. So you know what, we can talk about heavy topics and I still feel light with you, my Yeah, day. I know. <laughs> we Crazy. just can't help ourselves. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, I swear my work has made me really uh, embrace humour. Well, you've got to. I, yeah, yeah. Imagine you, a world without it. And you know that about me, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. I just, I don't know, I can get really, really real, but I don't, I try very hard to keep it light. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, now That's you great. have got the cheat sheet. Here we go. I haven't done this for a while, so I'm a bit rusty. Okay. <laughs> no excuses. No excuses. Well, it's not that hard. There shouldn't be an excuse. <laughs> oh, okay. and you can tell everybody oh, the books have come out. Oh, the books. Finally, the books are the here. The books have come we out. We had the big launch at the end of last year. It was it's a bit fabulous. Fun. I'm going to write more books so we can have more launches. Oh, good. Because you know I've got six more coming yeah, out. Yeah, I know. Six months. I know. You're just a book babe. There's <laughs> books everywhere. So yeah, everyone so, signpost for living. The books are out. They if are. If you look on the website, which is which is Kirsten Hunter Author dot com. 
com. There you go. And her Facebook is Kirsten Hunter Author. Instagram handle Kirsten Hunter Author. And Twitter is Kirsten Hunter AU. Um, her YouTube channel is Psych in Your Car. And these podcast 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 episodes, signpost for living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter and Kristen Coggan. Yeah, there you go, Doc. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like we're semi-drunk. We're not. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs>